in your hand. I haven't done this in a while. Ooh, I haven't done this in a while, you guys. What are we doing? I'm going to guess your zodiac sign. What happens if you guess it? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Right. I just feel I like I'm trying to get your energy. All right. Go ahead. To know your zodiac sign. You know your zodiac sign. Yes, I know. Okay. Aquarius. Yes. Really? No. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my god. <laughs> you tricked me. No, no, okay. No. Dang, what give me one more guess. Give me one more guess. I need your hand. Okay, let's go. Libra. Yes, I'm a Libra. Yes, I'm a Libra. Are you really though? Yes. Really? What are you? <laughs> You're trying to trick me. Yeah, okay, okay. This time for real. I'm what are you? That us. I'm, I'm a Libra. Really? Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, yes. I I could feel that though. I could feel the scale. Yes. So you're a Libra. How old are you? When I got off the plane, you know, to the Matala Muhammad Airport, a, a lady looked at me and she was like. Do you what? Do you want to give me love? I'm like, huh? Like, do you like, want to give me love? I'm, I'm, I'm like, what? That's, that's like, low-key a fire ass nigga vibe. I'm, I'm like, she was even joking. She was very. Do you want to give me love? She, she was very. She was very direct. I'm like, okay, I'm in Nigeria now. Was so, that like a turn on or a turn off? I mean, not 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 a turn off for me. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the food is massive in America. Like it is massive. Like. I saw a drink the size of my head, and bear in mind, I have a very big head, so... The 7-Eleven Big Gulp. Exactly. Like, it was massive. I was like, why do you drink out of the size, and it's, like, cheaper? That size was, like, a small or medium. This is, like, an extra small. Yeah. Literally. This yes. is, like, an extra small yeah. in America. This is, like, a medium or... Uh, this is, large. like, a... This is, like, a medium. <laughs> No, so serious. And McDonald's. Yeah, yeah McDonald's yeah, size is just going it's, it's, it's massive. Like, it is. And I'm like, I'm thinking of that, you know, it's that big. I didn't even come here like in the early 2000s or like late, late 90s where they had like the super size. Yeah. Super size. You know, I grew up, I watched it actually in yeah. Ireland. So it was interesting seeing that scope, you know, that perspective. But then actually being in it was, was completely different. Did you, um, are you into black food, African American food? So food, yes, I like soul food. Mm. So food. I, like me, I like me some soul food. So. Uh, give me your faves. Yeah, I still I, I like the mashed potatoes. Mm. Also, I have some mashed potatoes in yeah. there. I also like the okra, the fried okra. Okay, that was okra. That, that, that was very different. Obviously, fried chicken. Come on, I mean, yeah, I can't go wrong with that. You know, my husband does not enjoy soul food. Does it? No. That's he's no. so Nigerian now. Macaroni yeah. and cheese, he's just like, what is this? Like, he can't get with it. Yeah, I, I think we're on the same page with the macaroni and cheese. I, I don't like macaroni and Why? cheese. Like, maybe I'd have it like Thanksgiving because it's made like it's extra, extra special. He's just know? like, it's not giving for him. He doesn't like potato salad. Mm. You like it potato is. salad? Potatoes, yeah, I like potatoes. I mean, I'm Irish, you know. Oh, yeah, we're, of we're course. Obsessed. Of we're, course he's like potatoes. We're, we're, we're obsessed with potatoes, you know. That was like literally my Collard nickname. Greens. Irish potato was my nickname. That's so funny. Yeah. Collard greens? Collard greens. I actually haven't had that, actually. Really? Baked beans? Definitely. Thanks, baked beans. That's the go-to. Right mm, okay, okay. Peach cobbler? Not to clue what that is. Banana pudding? Yes. Okay, now you got a little black up there, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Irish tears. So I'm going to teach you this. Okay. You know the way in Spanish they have salud? Salud. So yes. in Ireland, we have our own toast, which is slancha. Slancha. Or in for long, it's slancha estancha, which means health as well. Oh, slancha estancha. So for short, slancha. Slancha. I want to add the estancha. What really attracted me to want to interview him was his experience on three different continents. So the Nigerian, the Irish, and the Texas lifestyle. Uh, we have a real life rancher here yes, right do, now. Do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited to get into this today. Would you like to introduce yourself to my audience? Um, hello, everyone. My name is Kamal West. I'm Irish and Nigerian. You know, I spent most of my life in Ireland, specifically Dublin, Ireland. 
I've lived on three different continents, in Europe, Africa, and North America. So I have a lot to share with you guys on the different cultural differences between each continent and you know, the, the positives, of course. You know, I've never met a person from Ireland. Now, I can't even say like a black person. Like I've just never met a person met? from Ireland, but yeah. my last name is actually Irish. Oh, okay. Caldwell. I think I've heard of it a couple of times. It is Irish. Yeah, my sl- my slave master of my descendants were Irish, which is so weird. Yeah, wow. we did the like whatever, whatever. So it's odd. I've never I have so many friends who live in the UK. A lot of Africans live in the UK. Yes, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot. But you know, you never hear of anyone from Dublin. Dub- Dublin, 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 from Dublin. So, so tell me about growing up in Ireland, like. Yeah, definitely. Growing as up, an African. As an African. So Do you identify up, as African? Or? Oh, definitely, of course. You know, both my parents are, are Nigerian, so, I, you know, I've got that African in me. You know. When you were growing up, did you feel African in Ireland? Like, were, are they a very easily assimilated? Was there a lot of, like, Nigerian or African markets? Like, what was it like growing up? For you, did you have a lot of like Nigerians or other Africans around you in Dublin? Like, how was that? Yeah, the, growing up in Ireland, there's so many Africans. Like, I, really, like, there's African like, African people everywhere. It's like yeah. in Dublin, Nigerians, South Africans, you know, Somalians, like a bunch of you know people from different African countries. And Ireland's like very welcoming in terms of you know. Being able to provide those different markets for the Africans because we have the different African foods. Usually, you find them at, at a lot of Afro-Caribbean spots. Mm. That's why you know Africans and Caribbeans we eat a lot of similar foods like yeah, um, you know fufu plantains. So rice, rice, jollof, the, the ingredients you know fish, yeah. catfish, you know. Chicken, a lot of chicken, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, Ireland's very, you know, it's very hospitable for sure. So did you travel back to Nigeria a lot when you were living in Ireland? Yes, I actually did. Really? I, yeah, my first time was, I think it was, it was about, I'd say 2009. So I was around like, I was a teenager, I was around 13 years old. Hold know? on, hold on. Yeah. I want to get to know you on a more personal level before we go on. How old are you? How old do I look? I would guess that you're like 28, 26 to 28. Are you sure? You sure? I get like a 20, the max like 29, 30-ish. But you know, black don't crack. And when you're dark skinned, you illuminate a little. Yeah, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? So when you're, especially when you're dark skinned, it's like it's kind of hard because the skin is just skinny. Yeah. Yeah, skinny. I feel. I feel. Are I feel, you like one of those people who are, are like shy to say their age? No, I'm I'm 26. I'm 26. Oh, see, I'm 26, see, I said 26 so. to 28. Yeah, okay, so. See, yeah, I was she, feeling she, that she vibe. Got, she's pretty good. With Listen, her, I'm a people ladies. person. I'm a energy reader. Okay, what do you do? So right now. I'm actually about to serve the country right now. Wow, yes. this country? Yes, about to serve. How the hell did you end up serving in Nigeria if you were in America and then? So this is how I ended up, you know, I've been, you know, thinking, you know, in the past, I've always thought about, you know, Nigeria. I wasn't really super into like Nigeria, I thought of, you know, coming here at the beginning. But like, as I grew older, I kind of started missing it. Mm-hmm. My my like ten year old self would have never you know, thir- thirteen year old self, self fourteen year old self would have never, you know, have thought to you know wanting to come to like Nigeria. But you know, I, I missed it a lot. You know, I missed you know seeing my friends over here. You know, school. So I, I mean, are yeah. they really like deeply your friends if you're yeah. away most of the time? Though we we still communicate you know, okay. through you know, social media. Yeah. You know, recently, I actually met one of some of my friends in Texas, so that was a great experience. Hmm. You got to kind of catch up and bond, you know, try out different jokes and this making. So now you're doing your service here in Nigeria. Yes. How long is that commitment? It's about, I said it's about a year. Yeah. A year. Okay, doing exactly what? So I'm going to be, so I'm in this program called NYC. 
which is National Youth Service Corps, where mm -hmm. you know Nigerians after getting your first degree, you and you want to you know work in the country and serve the nation, then you, it's compulsory that you you know you work you work to serve the country, and it's a way of you know bringing Nigerians together, you know the different tribes. This was formed during the the military times where Nigerians were. The sovereignty was formed by it wasn't by the government. It, the so sovereignty was formed by the military. Okay. Which so how that ended up you know being established. So and now I'm that's what brought me here. So do they let you me. like choose what you're gonna do? Like say like I I want to do fashion or like I want to do lumberjacking. Like do they let you choose a specialty? Or do they just tell you, like, this is what you're going to be doing? So, basically, they tell us that this is it. And there's no other option. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, basically, you get to choose what you want to do. So, you, you kind of do your own research and then decide which kind of aspect you want to do, whether it's fashion or, you know, whether it's finance mm. or, you know, different avenues. It's, it's flexible on that. What if you choose not to? Choose not to. I, w I wouldn't be able to answer that, but I hope someone would go there, you know, to service and, you know, decide on what they want to do. But I think there's other op options. There might be other options for people that don't know specifically what they want to do. So you would, like, try different different departments and kind of mm -hmm. figure out which one you like the best. So then I would come to Nigeria, like, once every, I think it was like once every two years. My first okay. time was in 2009. That was like very interesting because I've never seen like like Africa before at that mm. point. So it was very surreal, like you know, seeing. Oh, like, you had never been. Yeah, yeah. So what were some things your parents would say to you, like, oh, like? So they would say, you know, growing home is like, you know, you, you buy something at the store and you're like, you're like, you don't know how much I could buy this, you know, that you know, yeah. listen to that Nigerian mode. If they like, see a cucumber yeah. in, in Ireland, they're like, back home this would be. Two naira. It, yeah, yeah, I feel that. With the value exchange rate, especially. Yeah. You know, it's like this is this is so much cheaper, you know. So that, that's a, definitely one of the things they would say, and they'd always, you know, kind of like compare. It's like, you know, we miss home. You know, mm -hmm. we, we brought you, we brought you here. It, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't free. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. When I first got here. I did not. I did not know anyone. Like I literally did not know anyone. I was like, you know, coming from Dublin. Don't know anyone, but true, you know, meeting people, you know, friends of friends. That's how I got to meet some people and, you know, form some relationships with people. Then, you know, they showed me where, where to eat, where I can get to different food spots, you know, like where I could get to, you know, eat at African food spots. Like, for example, I would go there and eat like Amala, you know, like, you know, Ewedu, we eat those foods. I, I would eat them in, in Ireland, but it was... I was more of a like traditional, I want my fish and chips kind of person. Yeah. So it was kind of enlightening for me because I got to see the foods, even the foods that I didn't even know existed. I didn't even know there were like four tribes at the time when I moved. Yeah. I was like, I, mean, I knew of Yoruba, like tribes. But Yoruba, Ibo, Ibo, the basics. Not like deeply Nigerian. Almost. Yeah. There's even like over like four or five hundred. Mm. You know, I didn't even know there was like Hausa, which was... So what ages did you live? Like, well, what age did you leave? Let me say Ireland for the States. So I left, I left actually, I left from Ireland to Nigeria. Mm. So I actually lived here for two years before traveling to America. Wow. Okay. And how was that once you moved from Ireland to here? So, you know, once I move from Ireland to here was definitely like I'm here now I'm actually living here which was it was quite surreal I had to adjust a lot I'm you know, sure I, you know my accent is different the way I do people make fun of you oh, oh that oh definitely that definitely happened you know I get made fun of <laughs> for my accent all day like to the point yeah. where I just don't even care anymore I, I feel you're gonna get I went to this event and these girls were mocking me Oh, really? Mocking me because they thought I was faking my accent as a Nigerian. I don't oh, even know. Okay. Like, it's 
I don't know. Or do people, do you get that? Like you talk white, you sound white. Do people say that to you? I, I get what you mean. I've had it that way. It happens to me, it happens to me a lot. So it's, she, I think maybe the person either was envious or could have thought that you were Nigerian and that you were faking an accent, you know? I don't know. I, I say you look Yoruba to me. Yeah. I told you, I got DNA tested and I am Yoruba. You see, guys? See? Yeah. Um, what are you? Yeah, I saw that test. Are you Yoruba? You have to take a guess. What happens if you get it wrong, guys? Put it down in the comments. I, I'm the, I'll take a shot if I get it wrong. Hmm. You have to tell me your name, though. Your full name. My full name. That'll make it easier for me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you my middle name. Okay. What's your middle name? Ola Lua. That's my yeah, name. You're, 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 uh, yeah, you're Yoruba. Anything <laughs> Ola or Olu is Yoruba. Yeah, Yoruba. She, she knows. Yeah. She already knows. <laughs> yeah. What were like culture shocks that you had to deal with, or were you not shocked? Had you prepared? Because the internet will definitely prepare you. You know. Were you prepared? Do you feel like? Definitely not. Because <laughs> when I came, you know, I was just visiting. But like, you know, visiting a place as opposed to living in a place are two different things entirely. You know, you know, for example, you're visiting, you see, you know, you're going to all the good spots, you're going to all the places. But then when you actually live in here, it's like, Oh wow! I get to you know I get to see these people like like see people every day. Where Different. did you go? Oh, like what first, city were you in? So I was actually for the I went to a boarding school. So so I was actually in Ireland. No, in here. Okay, so, okay. So you came for boarding school. Yeah, I came for boarding school. Oh, yeah. So in Nigeria. That's a culture shock. So because they're strict at boarding school. Yeah, it was it was very strict for sure. But, you know, I thought it, it, it was kind of horrible at first, mm -hmm. but then as I Why do you think it was horrible? Just because of, just the, you know, so many strict rules that didn't have, you know, as much freedom. Like what? To... Give us some rules. What was the layout? We want the tea. Like from this, or from this time to this time, you can't do this. From this time to this time, you can only do this. But as I'm older now, I kind of see it as a way that made me who I am today because I see that you know, the principles, everybody was just trying to guide us in the right direction through life. And I can see all those aspects being implemented in my life. Yeah. Day to day. Which was like more rigorous of a curriculum, kind of like school in Ireland or when you came to Nigeria? Nigeria, hands down. And hands down Nigeria. It's like, I had like so many like subjects, you know, it was like, you know, English, math, you know, physics, chemistry, you know, also we had, you know, civics, we had data processing, we had, you know, physical education. And then I had to learn Turkish, which is a language that I, I never spoke. In Nigeria? Life. Yes. I, I went Why? To, my school was like a Turkish school, like international. Hmm. So we had, I had to learn Turkish. So that was actually, I'm actually interested in it. That you know, is very interesting. Think, Give us something in Turkish. Oh, merhaba. Merhaba means hello. Merhaba. <laughs> merhaba. <laughs> merhaba. That's so, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that culture is very interesting. So yeah. when you were in school in Ireland, like, did they infuse black history into the curriculum at all? Like, what was their curriculum kind of like as far as, like, helping you with self-identity, especially in a community where you said there was a lot of Africans? So this is a come closer. The answer is no, that's not. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, in, in Ireland, you know, majority of Europeans in general, don't learn much about you know African history, you know me being you know European and African, I wouldn't hear anything about African history at all. All we learn is about European history, you know, also about American history. For example, you know the medieval times, you know revolution, revolution, Christopher Columbus, American yeah. history. Also, you know, we also learn about. Mozart, you know, different contemporaries, music artists, you know, Van Gogh. Yeah. But not, nothing about Alan, you know, whatsoever. You know, Italian history, we heard about that. French. The Renaissance. Yeah, the Renaissance period. That's, That's what... interesting. Um, did you go to the UK a lot? Yes, yes, I did. So I had, you know, some 
friends over there and you know once in a while we would go we went there actually quite frequently actually so mostly around london london was the go-to spot you know everyone everyone's in london for sure what age did you leave boarding school left i think like 17 18 yeah and you point. graduated yeah i graduated okay so at that point you're done with high school yeah. what's next America, that was next. That was the next part. Mm, it's like that's so ghetto for you. I I, I want to go to America. Why? It's, I mean, it was it's big. It's big. I wanted a new experience. I didn't want to go back. You know, back to what made you like what what jiggled you to like I want to go to America. Like otherwise, it's big. Like what was the attraction faction factor? Okay. So basically. All my life, I played basketball, so I mean, oh, okay. it's like I mean, if you're if you're a basketball player, you know, that's where you want to be at, but you know, America. And then I was infatuated with like, you know, the American acting, and then also like, you know, modeling over there. So it's like, why not try something different? You know? Okay, no, I get that. It gets boring after you know, her, you know, seeing the same people. I get bored easily seeing the same mm-hmm. people. So you were feeling like bored in Nigeria, bored yeah. in. Europe, it's kind of small. Um, let me go check out America. Why not Canada? Canada, uh, I was like, too co- I was like too cold. But I mean, who knows? You never know. You never. That yeah. could be next, right? It could be next. Um. Yeah. So, how did you map out kind of what city you wanted to land in? So basically, you know, I did some research. I looked at, you know, the different states and you know, so what, which ones I liked, then. Eventually, I saw one, but I wasn't sure if it was like the final place for me. Then I was like, okay, let me just go to the state. Well, I did get a shock though, definitely. It what was, state? Uh, that Minnesota. So that's, I love Minnesota. Minnesota so. Okay, so what made you choose Minnesota? Well, I just wanted to get out in general. So uh, basically, any, you point at any states, you throw a, you throw a dart at it. Oh, that's, really? And that's where I would go. <laughs> Literally. Minnesota is a. What was your experience pulling up there? It was. It was different. The airport. It was. It was cold. Like yeah. they said, it was cold, but. It's I, like Canada. Okay. I I had no idea how cold it was. Minneapolis. Minneapolis is very cold. Minneapolis airport. Um, there's not really much there in Minnesota in that I can think of. Otherwise, like the Mall of America. Mall of America. No, you just hear. Uh, you hear. You hear. You hear that's, yeah, it's a bunch of some. It's like I know there's a big East African community yeah, yeah, in Minnesota. A lot of yes. East Africans go to Minnesota. I don't I, know why. A lot, especially I think in I'd say Minneapolis, the population is mostly like Somalians. Yeah, Somalians. I think Ethiopians, Ethiopians, Eritreans. Eritreans. Yeah, it's Cam- a very heavy East Cam- African. Cameroon. Yeah. Cam- so you were not feeling the vibe there too much. I mean, I liked it. What did you do there? I mean, what did you do for money? Like, what did you, how did you set yourself up? Did you have friends there? Like, what was that process? Because at this point, you're just country hopping. Like, So when I came here, I was like, I didn't know. I mean, actually, I knew one person, actually. So I met him. He, he was actually my friend in Nigeria. So I, I already, you know, had a friend already. So that was awesome, you know. So it made it, the process a little bit easier but at the same time we had a common denominator which is we don't know anybody so okay true you know once i got you know to campus i got to meet a lot of people and oh so you came for school yeah i came for school um so you're a scholar at this point yeah Yeah. so what did you study i studied finance Mm, okay so you got accepted they gave you the student visa yes okay okay mr finance student visa um what was your goal with that finance degree like what was your your career aspirations so to understand business and how finances work and you know the importance of finance and how to implement that in my day-to-day life and also implement it by you know helping other people with their finances which is you know very important were your loved ones like kind of scared for you to come to america like that's kind of far you yeah. know because they are used to you being in ireland used to you being in Nigeria, which they know, like, were they like, oh, any loved ones in your life kind of like, definitely, definitely. 
you know, everyone was kind of worried because, you know, you're, you're leaving to another country. Like, you don't know, you know, you don't have much family over there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I... Give me some, like, ghetto stories of things that just shocked you. Like, culture shock situations. You having been an Irish Nigerian pulling up in America. What were just some things that you were not prepared for mentally? I'd say people call me at me. <laughs> like, so, yeah. So one time, like, I came to, I went to visit my aunts. At the time, I was, like, still a teenager. So I was holding an Irish flag, you know. Why? And, yeah, because I just wanted to represent, you know, from Ireland. So you, you know, just walked around I, the flag? I, you know, it's I was, cute. like, I had an Irish flag, I had a Nigerian flag, so I was, like, Okay. He, so someone saw the flag, and he was like, "Oh, you're from? Cam- I think it was I think it was like Ivory Coast. Or I think it was from- yeah, Ivory Coast. Oh, the Cold- colors Cold- are Cold- kind of the same. Cold- yes, the colors are the same. Yeah. So, green, <laughs> so ours is like green, white, orange, and this is orange, white, green. So he comes up to me and he's like, "My African brother, you know, my African brother. What's up?" I was like, y- "Yes, I'm African too." He's like, "Yeah, okay. So Ivory Coast, right? Yes, I'm African and a European." He's like. Okay, so you're not you're not from you're not African. No, I'm African too. Like I'm Nigerian too. I'm Nigerian. So <laughs> he's like, what flag is this then? I'm just like Irish flag. He dead ass looked me in the eye and he was like, go away. You know, he was like, go away. Like it was very different. Man's tried to fight me. Like he tried to fight you. He tried to fight me. I was like, wow, are you kidding me? Like over a, like over a flag because I'm not from the same <sighs> country that you're from. That was that was. But you different. know, I kind of feel him. Yeah. That was di- that was different. That's out of pocket though. He shouldn't have done that. But I think it was a confusion because he's probably like, "Why do you have pride to be from like this colonizer country?" Maybe that maybe that was in his head. I don't know, but definitely he didn't have. He to. was he, and he was African. Yeah, he was African. Oh, he tried to fight you. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah that he was, was probably confused for you. Like, what is going on here? Yeah, yeah. What is going on here? That's so funny. Um, the food is massive in America. Like, it is massive. Like, I saw a drink the size of my head. And bear in mind, I have a very big head. So The 7-Eleven Big Gulp. Exactly. Like, it was massive. I was like, why do you drink out of the size? And it's, like, cheaper. That size was, like, a small or medium. This is, like, an extra small. Yeah. Literally. This yes. is, like, an extra small yeah. in America. This is, like, a... Medium or this is like a this is like a medium. (laughs) No, so serious. And McDonald's, yeah, Yeah, McDonald's size is just going. It's 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 massive. Like I'm, I'm like I'm thinking of that. You know, it's that big. I didn't even come here like in the early two thousands or like late late nineties where they had like the super size. Yeah, super size. You know, I grew up. I watched it actually in Ireland, so it was interesting seeing that scope. You know, that perspective. But then actually being in it was. It's completely different. Did you, what is your like take perception and interactions with African Americans specifically? I kind of, you know, by dating one, you know, I got to actually get a different perspective, you know, mm. on life. So let's, that, let's talk about that. How did yeah. she give you a different perspective on life? Yeah, she kind of like, you know, told me, you know, kind of, she's very intellectual. Mm. She was kind of guiding me to the history of. African Americans in America, and you know, talk to me about you know how you know, people came here. And was that something that you just were not aware of before then? I was, but it was like in depth because, like, at the time I was, you know, I think I, I believe I was in like Alabama, so it was like. Oh, that's, that's the deep, deep yeah, exactly. plantation belt. Yeah, so down south, you know, I was also in you know Texas, so over there, kind of people. We definitely talk about it a lot more, I'd say, down south. And plus, down south is like, you know, where the, like you said, where like a lot of the plantations were, you know, Martin Luther King, you know, rest in peace. She, she exposed me to that and, you know, you know how they, you know, how they treated people over there, then, you know, moving them, then also kind of like the skin, the skin color thing. Yeah, colorism, yeah, the, the colorism. paper bag test. Oh, you're yeah. dark. You can't sit over here. Yeah, but, that, yeah, that's so uh, sad. Yeah, and then the Rosa Parks. She, mm. she kind of she told me a lot of things that I wasn't aware of. And so I love my good sis for this. How did those conversations come about, though? Were y'all just kind of like kicking it, and then she was like, 
now hold up now you need to you know or was it just like you asking questions like how did that come about like just day-to-day -day conversations kind of so this happened you know while we were just just grabbing some food at like a chinese restaurant and she was asking me a bunch of questions so i figured i'd ask her it's like you know what's like you know being african-american in, in the country and she, that's how she enlightened me about you know the history, the African American history, and also about you know how people were treated, and you know also on how things can get better, you know moving on, moving on from that. But I definitely felt like there was, you know, not everyone is like is like that, but I'd say in some circumstances, not everyone can is able to handle it in very very well. Yeah. But, but Did you feel any like racial tension disparities between like your life and in interactions in Ireland versus America? Like the way that people say like racial tension is so high in America. Da, 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 da. Did you like actually feel that way when you got there? Or do you feel like, oh, maybe this is like a little like exaggerated? Like That's a great question. So in, I say in Ireland, America, Africa, I think, I believe that it's everywhere in general. It's everywhere, you know, it's for you know blacks, you know whites, you know Arabic people, Asians. It happens to everyone, especially. I think it happens, you know, when you're when you're not like predominant. When you're in a place that is not predominantly your race, it's, it's definitely you know about to happen. But you know, you just it happens. You kind of have a, you have to have a very you know strong you know mindset and mentality that you know, this happens, but I'm not gonna allow it to fix you know my situation in a way. So yeah, it's it's just one of those things you just have to kind of ignore. You know, there are a lot of good people out there, so that's what I kind of like focus my energy. You know, what are some like good business opportunities or like? gaps kind of in the market that you see here in Nigeria now that you're here or some like positive changes that you want to make as a Nigerian returning from the diaspora? I'd say in terms of, you know, being able to add value to, you know, to my fellow Nigerians. And I've also seen like the tech space has grown like tremendously. I've seen so many Nigerians and Nigerian diaspora, African diaspora in general, you know, people moving back, you know, people are getting engaged, getting to learn a lot about Africa, you know. And I believe we have the likes of, you know, David O, you know, Wizkid, Borna Boy, and also the different, you know, politicians to, to thank, you know, for being able to push it, push out that, that out there to the world. Where do you see yourself within the next 10 years? Like, what is just what you want to do? So I, I see myself, you know, being, I'm business oriented, so I, I want to have my own business. That's that's the goal. So I'm right now in the process of you know figuring out what specifically I want to dive into. So what, what I do like doing, you know, I like my different passions and hobbies are, you know, tailoring, tailoring clothes, modeling. You know, I love sports. I'm a huge sports guy. Basketball, football, or soccer, as some, 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 some people may say. Soccer. Yeah, and art. I love art. So okay. It was, and photography, taking pictures, you know. It's something I, I, I like doing in my spare time. I have a bunch of pictures from the places I've been to, you know, like Dubai, in there, also Germany and Munich. So I, I, I enjoy traveling and meeting people from different cultures and learning languages. I really love that. Um, give me some suggestions or places like where have you been in Nigeria, just Lagos and Abuja? Like, do you have plans to kind of travel Nigeria? So, I've, I've only been to, I've actually been to Ogun State. That's like the third state I've been to. So, mm. apart from that, it's just those, just, just those three. Okay. Where does, um, where's your Yoruba state? Like, so, mine's in, Mine's in Ogun State, Ogun State. Okay. What am I saying? Actually, that's four, actually. That's okay. four. I've been there. I went to see my my dad's, you know, as we say, take care of parents, you know, children to 
the village to local village. So I've been to like the village, like I've been to like the Abankata. So I'm from that's my I've heard that being village, right there. that's my village right there. So I've heard that being represent... the Yoruba man is kind of stressful because you have to like get down on your knees to greet his family. Yeah. So I mean that's that's been normalized for me. Because you know, I grew up with you know Nigerians, you know, in general, but I could see you know someone outside of that perspective seeing it as weird or as... not weird, but just like damn, like <laughs> what if I'm the guest? You know, it is it every time that you see them you have to get down and greet them? It depends on who it is, but I say for the most part, you know, it's a sign of respect, to, you know, to your elders, which is why I've seen that. Nigerians, like, we always have, you know, we're very respectful towards our elders, you know, no matter what to do. Like, do you get down to greet your mom and dad when you see them? De and de definitely, but at the same time, like, I bear in mind that my parents, you know, they grew up in Europe, so I mean, mm. so they kind of have that westernized, you know, welcoming and mentality that, okay, that it's okay if you, you know, you don't have to greet me all the time. But, you know, if I, for example, if I don't see them in a long time and I, I see them, oh, I'm definitely greeting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I still greet a lot. So that's, that kind of culture has never left, left my sight. So it's 100% necessary for sure. Oh, I feel like you're a handsome guy, tall, nice, well-spoken. I'm sure there's some ladies out there who might be watching this like, oh my God. <laughs> Um, what is your type? I mean, I think first, first and foremost, and I, I don't mean just physical. Physical, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I say first and foremost, I say God, God fearing. That's like mm. that's like my number one. Like, you, you, if you ain't God fearing, I mean, you got you know, mm. I, I don't think it's gonna work. You know, I, I mean, mean awesome. what like when you say God fearing, is it like? She has a connection with God, but she doesn't go to church every Sunday, or does she need to go to church every Sunday? I mean, it can be a mix of the two because you know sometimes we're just there. There comes in times where you know we can't we can't go to church, but you know even if you, you're not going to church, I mean you can pray at the house. You know, mm -hmm. there's you know, there's no excuses not keep, to pray. Keep, keep praying, you yeah. know, you keep praying, connecting. Yeah, you know, you do do it on your own terms, but that's the key thing that you know, okay. the for the relationship to work and. The Bible, there's so many verses that you know helps people throughout life. Which I think is very important, definitely. Okay, so God fearing is one. Well, God fearing, I mean. What's next? Also, I'd say kids definitely like you gotta learn way to raise kids. You know, nurturing, nurturing. nurturing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the word I was looking Mothering for. Mothering material, yeah. nurturer, home manager yeah. type vibe. Definitely, because. I wouldn't want to see anybody, you know, nurturing my child. It has to be someone that's responsible that I can trust. So I think those are definitely big things. And also, you know, being able to communicate effectively, mm -hmm. you know, let me know, you know, if you're feeling some type of way, you know, let me know. Communicative, how we, okay. You know, Very verbally it. able to yeah. speak their feelings. Yeah. Does she need to make a certain amount of money? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, what if she's jobless and always asking you for money? Do you not care? Or are you like the type like oh, I'll be the provider or like the oh I don't want no bro be bro nah, be. I'm more of the provider. I, I'm I'm provider, but at the same time she gotta be doing something for sure still. Okay, so like hobbies. It could be a hobby as long as she's you know she's doing something of her own. Like what if it's like one hundred percent influencer vibe? I mean, I I don't mind that. I mean, as long as she's. You know, she's passionate about it. She likes doing it. And, you know, she, she makes people's lives, you know, better by, you know, pursuing her passions, you know, being better every day. You know, she has her own goals. Her Does own body goals matter? Goals. Does she, what if she has a bad body? Bad body. So what, what's your definition of a bad body? Maybe like a very big gut or are you yeah. not like, are you the type like we can get that together and go to the gym, baby? Or do you want a girl kind of with a nice, yeah, I should have done that. Like lash, lash. Okay, so I'd say, I say at the beginning I was kind of like more body, but I think it's not everything. There's you know, there's different things that is in a person. You can't just look at someone's physical. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might be physical, but if you're not God fearing, then you might have a good body. Yeah. But if you're not God fearing, then that's like it's just kind of like 
so it's kind of non-negotiable for me. Mm -hmm. So I say I I usually I prefer someone you know that's you know fit, fit. But if you're if I see that you're you know you know you're not super fit you know but you're at least you're trying you're making the efforts mm -hmm. and sure I I don't mind you know working things with you whereby we can have a workout plan and that goes for in the future I mean you could be fit now I could be you know, bigger tomorrow fat, yeah and especially it's very easy to get fat yeah then you know it's true sometimes you get pregnant and then yeah that you know that, you that, out. That, that happens so yeah I, mean, I think it's it's important to be like. You know, husband material and be able to. Like, I was just gonna ask you about that. Being husband material, are you a Yoruba demon? I'm not a Yoruba demon. I'm an angel. I'm an angel. But there's no Yoruba demon. I need references. I don't know what people are saying about Yoruba demon. <laughs> we listen, guys. We are good people. Don't let them. Don't let them trick you. It's a lie. I Everything. mean, I think Lucifer was an angel at one point. He he was actually yes. Definitely. Yeah, you could be good people. Nah, we're. We're the good ones. We're not the we're not the ones that were, you know, talking with Lucifer and planning to overthrow the kingdom. No, mm. we're, we're the good ones. We're not co we weren't coverted about, you know, going against God. <laughs> so we we're good for sure. It's been a blast having you. Um I love this for you. I think that people like you are very, very important. Um being a what well, I forgot what they call it, a repat. Like, so you come back, like I'm an expat. Um, I don't, I'm not Nigerian technically. Um, and I'm living here outside of my home country in X, Y, and Z, but you're a repat. You are a Nigerian yes. and you're coming back, you know, especially to a place where so many people are fleeing, mm. you know, Yes. It's, it's, anyone it's who could thing. leave is, I think, you know, m most people, even People who have told me when I'm like, yeah, I live in Nigeria, I'm moving here. And they're like, is your job here? And I'm like, no, it's remote. And they're like, why are you here? Why would you, you know, a lot of Nigerians even ask me that, like, why did you come back? I feel like, like, what are you here for? So I feel like it's just really awesome when people like you who have like traveled out to like better quote unquote places that a lot of people would say like it's better to live in, like come back home and like reinvest um do your service like and just make a life here in a place where many people who are here don't want to make a life you know so i think that's really admirable and really awesome um likewise to you i say you know you know being from america you know coming out to the, another country you know not to mention continents yeah you know going out your ways you know doing that is very Brave of you, I'd say. Yeah, you know, Nigeria ain't for the weak. That's all I, I have. See, my said strength. It, said it, said it, otiton. That's what we say, otiton. <laughs> Listen, my strength yeah. mentally has gone up here. Like, I've, I've lived in Ghana, I've lived in Kenya, and this has trained me in a, in a good way. Nigeria is good. Nigeria is good. Literally. Awesome. <laughs> Freaking awesome. It is awesome. Well, please tell me my tell my followers how they can support you. What is anything that they can do? So I'd say right now, you know, move to Nigeria. So uh, you know, I'm working with different you know models. So I model in my spare time. So and I also have a collaboration with my a friend of mine from college. He has the best clothes I've ever seen in terms of like street wire, street clothes, you know, that in terms of the fashion. Yeah. It's very artsy. It's everyone loves it. You know, I wear the hoodie around campus and everybody's like, where'd you get that hoodie from? Where'd you get that hoodie from? I love that. So I would love to get my husband some pieces. We like to give okay, we can set something up for you. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to something. revamp his wardrobe. All right, okay. So I'd say you could follow his social media it's butter soup we'll put his socials yeah. links below so we'll yeah. put his social Definitely. your social yeah. um anything else you want to say yeah i want to thank Brittany so much for inviting me on her channel you guys come here closer you have to like comment and subscribe they will and ring the bell notification of course thank so, you thank for you so that much for